Okay, so this screencast will demonstrate a couple of the different features of Beaker's tooling and help you get familiar with how Beaker is a little bit different from developing on the web, uh, but nothing too um, surprising or unapproachable. Usually the DAT sites will feel and operate in the same way that you're used to with HTTP. The biggest difference is that they're designed to be entirely client-side and not access uh, remote services unless they specifically need to. So rather than being default connective to the web, they're default um, closed and sandboxed. And that's primarily to give users a little bit more safety uh, whenever they're using these applications so they can feel more free about giving these apps access to their local data and not worry that the information is going to be exfiltrated to some remote service. Now, the tooling itself, again, it's a little bit different, but it won't take long to get used to. I've taken the vanilla JS uh, to do MVC. And the first thing you should know is you're going to want to use the BKR tool if you're going to do any serious development. You can publish entirely using the GUI in Beaker, but it's going to be a whole lot slower. So um, you'll have to use um, NPM. And that'll just run the install process for you. Now, I've already installed it, so I'm going to stop that there. The second thing to know is if you want to get any folder immediately uh, uh, viewable inside of Beaker, you can run the BKR dev command. This command is normally designed for you to your uh, your your development cycle, but it's uh, a general purpose tool that can get anything in the browser immediately. So here's that to do MVC site, and it's just a nice example. Um, single page application that we can use. So, this URL that was allocated and automatically opened for us is temporary. Um, as soon as I close this running process, it will be lost. The private key that controls this URL will be destroyed. Um, and uh, eventually, uh, Beaker itself will garbage collect it with the rest of its cache. That is, again, because this is designed to be a, a tool that you use uh, during development to quickly put together um, a site and, and do work on the site. Now, the reason that we create a temporary site is that uh, DAT sites keep a change log of all modifications to any of its um, assets. You can think of that change log as being somewhat similar to Git's history log. And you don't normally want to clutter up that log with lots of changes because the files themselves won't necessarily get replicated out, but the hashes for them and the sort of metadata entries in that log will be. So you want to be somewhat conservative about what you put on the actual log that gets replicated out to everybody so that your metadata remains as small and compact as possible. So let's demonstrate one other aspect about the um, development. Because it is a temporary site, uh, it's able to live watch the directory and automatically write changes to any of the files into this site. So you can um, take advantage of that in a pretty straightforward way. We'll just modify the title here. And again, since this is the, devs, uh, the dev tool, BKR dev, and it's live watching, I can refresh and it will automatically make that change. Now, related to that, Beaker has a live reloading feature that's pretty handy for development. Um, and that works for any DAT site. And so as soon as the change is published, the page will reload. And that's watching for any change of any asset in the site. And it'll reload whatever page you're on if you're under the domain. Just a nice development feature. Let's go ahead and destroy our temporary site. And now it is gone forever. Beaker will still be able to, to browse it. And this site is going to be hosted off of your um, off of your machine. So if you wanted to, you could share this URL here, and somebody else, if they're able to get uh, in touch with you over the network, should be able to load it. So it's uh, a suitable tool for whatever you're doing development in a team, and you need to share something that you're working on at the moment. This is a shareable URL, but now that I've closed this process, I am never going to be able to make changes to it again because the private key has been destroyed something a little more permanent, you want to use the BKR init command. This is somewhat similar to the npm init command. It's going to step me through the process of creating a manifest for the site and then create a key pair for it. 
there are a couple of different things it's going to ask. Uh, first of all, the title. We'll call it to do MVC. A description. This is optional, but we'll say my test dat application. The author field. This is a free form field, but I prefer to put my email address in here. And then we can review it. And we'll say, yes, that's fine. Now we have a URL which is going to be um, better for sharing because it uses a, uh, uh, it keeps the, the private key inside of uh, Beaker. So if I go to my hosted sites tab, we can now see this application that I just created. And this is going to stay um, available, you know, as long as I keep it until I decide to delete it. Uh, you'll notice there aren't any files in here. Uh, at the outset, all that's created in the site itself is the dat.json, which is that manifest file that we created. So if we actually want to populate this thing with files, let's turn on that live reloading and call BKR publish. And this is this publish command is uh, takes cues from npm. So um, I'm going to give it uh, a version of 1.0. This version right here is optional. You could, if you want to, leave it off, but uh, it's uh, you can put it in there to have the dat.json's version automatically updated for you. You can put in actually anything you want. I encourage people to use semantic versions, but you don't have to do that. You could even use an arbitrary text string. But if you are using semantic versions, you can specify it fully like this, or you can do major, minor, or patch. So we'll publish major here, and it should tell us we're publishing 1.0.0. That's okay, so I'll say yes. And now the files have been populated. The publish command is going to look for any file in this directory and put it into the site, except for anything that's, uh, that's in the .git folder or the .dat folder. Uh, don't worry about what the .dat folder is. There's some other tooling in the ecosystem which will write that. Uh, it's important that it doesn't get published, uh, but I'm going to not get into that right now. Let's uh, explore the files real quick. There's two ways to go from looking at a site to the files that are inside of it. One is you can go over to the title and click on View Site Files. Another one is simply to go over to this little folder right here and click on it. So now we're seeing everything that's inside of the site that we just published. We can browse around these files. Open them up directly if you like. There's also tooling here to toggle whether or not you're going to be hosting the site. So if I turn this off now, uh, if nobody else has replicated this site to anybody, then it's not going to be accessible to anyone. Now, by default, whenever you create a new site, it's going to be hosting. So we'll turn that back on. You could fork the site. Basically allocates a new URL and copies all the files in here into that new fork. It also includes some metadata in the uh, dat.json, which is hidden by default saying that it is a fork of uh, the original site. So you can actually see the provenance of a site. Other thing to look at is the history here, which just shows the different um, changes that were written. And it's basically this metadata log is one file or folder uh, per entry. And you'll see here that that.json was written first and then everything else came after. If I want to check out a new copy of this, let's say this todo.mvc folder was destroyed. That wouldn't be a problem because Beaker keeps inside a um, canonical copy of all these files. So if I wanted to check out a new version, maybe because to do mvc that folder was lost, or I just want to have a second copy, I can create a new folder and run the checkout command. And I simply supply it with the URL that I'm looking for. And there's our dat.json and uh, all the rest of the files. This is interesting to me. That may be a bug that I'll have to look into. The URL field should have been correct originally. So this is alpha software, and that's the kind of thing you get. But from here, I'm actually able to make changes just as before. It's important that you pull from the uh, canonical source before you start to work, um, because Beaker won't tell you if you make a change in one version of the set that you've checked out, and then you're about to overwrite that change in another. Again, it's very similar to npm publish. Let me demonstrate exactly what I'm talking about. 
we have two copies of the site right now to do MVC and to do a VC2. In the index.html, I'm going to go ahead and make a change here and publish this. Okay, so as you can see, the title was updated. Now the title is different between and it went up. the title is different between these two copies. In the index.html to do MVC2, we have the dat there, but in the original, we don't. If I were to republish from the original. Not only does it not have the title updated, it's not even aware that 1.0.1 was already published over here. And that's because I did not update this folder. So we're going to say no, don't publish that. We're going to run bkr pull. This command will pull the most recent changes to the archive that you're working on into the local folder. It's going to do a bland, uh, at the moment, rewrite. It's not going to tell you that it's about to conflict with anything. It's just going to completely update the current and now we should see that index.html has been updated. So make sure that you're going to run your polls. Also be careful about when you do that. I would suggest that you use git as you normally do in your workflow uh, and then think of BKR publish again like npm publish. Now let me double check see what other I need to other commands I should show. One good command to know about is BKR open. Similar to the BKR dev command, it's just gonna open inside the browser whatever site you happen to be in for your folder. So it looks at the dat.json in the local folder and says, okay, there's a URL. I'll go ahead and open that in a new tab. So BKR open is a handy tool. BKR fork is another handy, app, uh, handy tool. It's just a way to fork from the command line, and why don't we go ahead and demonstrate that, so bkr, I'll do And you can see we have an entirely new URL, but as soon as we open it, it should look just like our original. And let's look at the dat.json for a moment to see. There's that metadata telling us what it was forked from. So that's a pretty solid rundown of the different tools for uh, development. There's lots more to talk about in terms of the new APIs that are uh, in Beaker, but that should give you a good starting point to get working. And check the website, the beakerbrowser.com, to find uh, documentation on the different APIs as well as the tools that I just showed you.